Welcome to the Wood Turning Workshop. You know, as wood turners, when we see wood like this, we think firewood, right? Well, not today. I'm going to show you a really cool project that we can make out of green branch wood. Stay tuned. The Wood Turning Workshop is made possible in part by Woodcraft since 1928, providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Tormac, water-cooled sharpeners with innovative jigs and setting devices. Getting your sharpening done quickly gets you back to the job at hand. Tormac, sharpening innovation. <laughs> well, pardon my mess. I was up late last night working on this project. It is a simple project. It is a fun project, but it is a very delicate project, and you can blow it up in an instant if you sneeze or look the wrong way. We're going to turn a project from green wood from start to finish. And you can see I have several different woods here, and I found out as I was practicing and looking at this, you want to find a wood that has a tight grain that's really dense. If you have a light wood, uh, it won't work very well, it'll fall apart. And what we're going to be making are what I like to call drunken goblets. They're really cool. Uh, you turn them completely from green wood and you can see how they warp. It's a really, really neat effect. There are very few things you can turn from start to finish out of green wood and this is one of those projects. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, uh, let's see, well I've got hawthorn here, uh, I've got some pecan, no, uh, walnut here. So we're going to use some walnut. I think that'll be a really good one to start with today. So we're going to take it over here to the bandsaw and just nip it off. Oh, let's see. Turn this on. Keep my fingers clear. And the reason we're nipping the end off, I'll show you here, is that as wood dries, it starts to crack from the center out. And the reason it does that is Think of this as a compression bandage. As a tree grows, um, you wrap the compression bandage around your arm, it gets tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. So this in here is under a lot of pressure, this is under less. As this loses water, it cracks. So when we cut it, here I'll just show you on this end, there's no crack there. So now we're gonna take, whoops, I gotta cut one more. <laughs> and then we're gonna take it over to the lathe and I'll start showing you how we start making this project. Okay, now the clock is ticking. From this point on, you don't want to stop. You want to keep moving because if you slow down, the moisture is going to seep out of here and you will start getting cracking. This is a project that you don't want to leave on the lathe and go have dinner and come back. Now, one important thing, if you notice right here, that's the pith, the dark center. You see the circles going around. It's not dead center. That's the cool thing about using a branch. It's a little bit off center because we can't have the pith right in line with the stem or the stem will fall apart. So I'm going to put my dry spur just a little bit off center like that. So turn it around and mount it. And get this down here and I'm going to do the same on the tailstock here. So it's just a bit off center. And all I want to do right now is to rough this out just enough and get the bark off. And I'm also going to cut a tenon on the end of this. Oops, make sure it turns. That looks good. Bring that down just a little bit. And one thing I have to have, let me get this off screen here. <laughs> My Darth Vader mask, because there's gonna be a lot of chips flying. I got that turned way down. Now let me turn the lathe on. And I'm just gonna knock some of the bark off. And it's just like any roughing out you do. You start here and just move your body to the side and make a straight line. Well, the tools we're going to be using today, a roughing gouge, a 3 8 inch bowl gouge, a 5 8 inch spindle gouge, and a 3 8 inch spindle gouge. 
and a 3 8 inch shallow spindle gouge. We're going to be using a parting tool, a bedan tool, and a 1 quarter inch round nose scraper. It is such a joy cutting green wood as compared to dried wood. The shavings that come off are just tremendous. Now, again, I'm not turning this to completion. I'm just knocking the bark off to advance the process a little bit because the bark dulls the tool quickly, and I'd rather dull my roughing gouge than I would my other tools because I'm going to be sharpening it a lot anyway as we do this project. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I just want to cut a tenon on the end with my bedan tool. Now, if you remember, I've ground this one at an angle because that matches the bevel on the inside of the jaws on my chuck, so it makes it a lot easier to make a tenon. But the first cut I'm going to do right here is just to clean up the bottom, make it straight. And now I'm going to come back. And we're going to come at an angle. Clean that up just a little bit on the edge. There we go. And that'll fit nicely inside the jaws of the chuck. Okay. Well, we've got it mounted in the chuck now. And as always, when you put something, reverse it, put it back on the chuck. From between centers it's going to be a little bit out of round so we'll go back to our roughing gouge and just take a light pass along here just to even it out and it's not that we need it evened out but the uh, smoothness of the surface will help us start our other cuts now we're going to get some vibration as we do this and you can kind of hear it right there on the end that's because this is sticking out so far from the, the uh, headstock Ew. okay we've got that rounded out turn this off for a second what we want to start forming is the bell of the chalice, <laughs> the goblet. So if you look at it down here, we're going to start shaping this part right down to here. We're going to do this in stages as we go because we want to come in and hollow at the same time because this is very, very thin. So we'll start with my 5 8 inch spindle gouge and we'll just start making little sweeping motions like this and again look at these shavings they're just incredible when you're using green wood it's such pleasure I really enjoy doing this and the only time you really get to enjoy shavings like this is when you're making a bowl so this is kind of a special project now remember this is kind of like making a bead so we got to sneak up on it so we're going to remove a little bit of wood from back here as we go and we're just going to take our time and it really helps to make sure that your tools are very sharp to make these cuts. Okay, I'm going to sweep this in a little bit more because I want to have a rim. Hear that vibration? Pushing just a little bit hard. And the tool's telling me that it's starting to get a little bit dull. Believe it or not, it's starting to get a little bit dull. And we're going to be sharpening a lot during this show. Now I want to make this outside perfect because I'm not coming back to it again. So I'll pick up my cut there, get rid of a little more wood here, and see I'm starting to get dust now rather than shaving, so I'm glad I'm just about finished with this cut because the next time I use this tool I'm going to go sharpen it. Okay, well I'm taking this opportunity to sand the outside that we've done so far to about 220 grit and the reason I'm doing it now is because this is going to be so thin and fragile we'll break it if we come back later and remember this is green wood so your paper is going to clog so in this case I'm using a mesh type paper where I can actually take my compressor and blow out the clog so the paper lasts a lot longer if you're using regular paper bag sandpaper it'd be clogging up every few seconds and you'd be going through a lot of paper and another thing that's kind of fun about this is I have a water bottle. And the reason I have this, you want to keep this moist as you go along. Yeah, it's wet, but it is drying out every second that we turn. So I'm adding a little bit of water just to keep things going. So I've got the sanding done. And I want to bring my tail stock, <laughs> my tool rest, <laughs> over to this side. And if you notice, the lathe is getting a little sticky. That's because it's getting water on it. But once I'm done, I'll use... Uh, use uh, some uh, chemicals, chemicals, lubricant to clean up the lathe and get rid of the rust. So I'm putting this down a little bit below center height and I'm going to take uh, a little tiny bowl gouge, a 3 8 inch bowl gouge with a swept back tip 
and we're going to use this to start hollowing. Well, how do I know how thick or thin I am? We're going to be using a light, and hopefully it won't blind Brian or you at home, but it's very important that we set this light up while we're turning, and as we go thin, we're going to see over here how much light's coming through, and that's going to tell us how thin our walls are. Let me turn the speed up a little bit here. Now, this is uh, walnut that we're using, but yeah, it looks awfully white, doesn't it? Well, that's because we're used to seeing the dark walnut. Well, that's in the center of the tree. So most of what we're turning here is sapwood. And to be honest with you, uh, the other pieces I made were out of hawthorn. I know how that sapwood reacted, but now that I'm thinking about it, I have no idea how the uh, walnut's going to react as I turn it, so this could blow up. <laughs> and if it does, we're going to make an edit, and we're going to be turning a nice piece of popcorn. Aren't these shavings great? Now, whoop, a little vibration there, I'll take a lighter cut. You can start to see, over here you're seeing through the wood. That's telling us that we're starting to get thin. So you want to be very delicate with your cuts now. And I'm still trying to get to that lip so I can start to cut in. So now tools turned like this, I can speed the cut up by rotating the tip. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to try our entry cut and we're going to watch the light as we go in and it'll tell us how thick or thin the walls are and how consistent they are also. Okay, that's step one. We're going to swing out a little bit, remove some more of the wood. But you can see what we're going after. See how bright that's getting? That's very, very thin. Okay, starting to get a little more vibration, and that's not because that's sticking out so far, but it's because the tool's dull already. So, lo and behold, Here's my little secret. I hide this in the corner all the time. You rarely see it. Here's my sharpening system. And I'm going to put a fresh edge on this. And we're going to be doing that a lot during this show. But while I'm sharpening this, Bob Fulton, genius of the jig, has a tip for us. I like to put turquoise in my bowls, and people really like to see turquoise in them. But I need turquoise that's powdered or very fine and in order to get that you can buy powdered turquoise but it's a lot cheaper to get big chunks and put them into a more homemade mortar and pestle. In order to have this I bought these pieces of pipe uh, with one big piece and one smaller one with a cap on each end and I had to grind this down so that it would go down into there. This allows you to crush the turquoise without losing it all. Like if you were using a hammer, you'd lose a lot of it. And so then you, but you crush it, you pour it into a sieve, shake it a little bit, and get the small powdered stuff out. And then you'll have powdered that you can use to put into the cracks in your bowl. That's my tip for today. Keep turning and have fun. I wish Pop could figure out a jig to automate this process. Well, I've moved the light over a little bit so you guys can see it better, but it makes it a little bit harder for me to see, so this will be kind of interesting. So if I do blow it up, we're starting over, and you're not gonna see that part. Okay, and you can see the new blade is cutting very nicely. And we're nice and bright there. That's the whole cool part about this. Believe me, we are less than a 30 seconds of an inch thick there. So I'm gonna go down and do this in little segments. Okay, gonna come back very carefully here. Pick up my cut right there. And I'm trying to get consistency of light through there so I'm the same thickness all the way through because with this project, you want to have the walls the same thickness all the way down for the drying process 
because that will enable it to warp and not crack while it's drying. The warp we want, the crack we don't. Don't do that, but I just did it. Try and clear out a little bit of the dust so I can see. Pick up my cut again. There we go. Now I'm gonna keep working my way in just a little bit and then we're gonna have to switch to some scrapers to finish up the bottom of the goblet. Well, I've moved to the side now and you can see the light shining through right here. I'm using that because I wanna start shaping the outside bottom part of the goblet. And I wanna make sure that as I come up here, I don't go through any wall of it. And I'm back to using my big spindle gouge, but I'm not gonna use it much further than this because I need to make some really tight corners here. So I'm going to switch to my 3 8 inch spindle gouge, which will help me make a little tighter turn. Because I want to almost finish the goblet now before I go back in and start hollowing out the inside. So you run the tool, you raise the handle, you turn, you make your curve. Turn, raise, curve, looking good. I want to come down just a little bit more. And then we'll go back to the inside. Oh, I love turning green wood. Oops, love turning green wood. I've been doing a little bit of hollowing with my small round nose scraper and I'm about ready to make the final passes to get the thickness on the rim of the goblet the way I want it. But it's extremely important you go back and put a new burr on your tool before you do this because you want this to be as fresh a cutting edge as possible. Now, actually it's not a cutting edge, it's a scraping edge. So we're going to start this up and I'm going to come in here I'm going to make some gentle passes and again I'm using the light to show me what I'm doing here. I'm just pulling back gently and barely removing any wood. This is kind of where you grit your teeth a little bit. You see the light starting to appear. And this is where you don't want to get into a hurry and blow things up. Now, one thing that's gonna kinda mess you up is the sawdust is gonna build up in there a bit. So you wanna have your air compressor right in and clean it out once in a while. And then you'll be able to see through a little bit better. I'm trailing my tool. It's a little bit below center level. And I'm using pull cuts. They seem to work the nicest. If you do a push cut, you might get too aggressive and go through the side. Let's see here, we're getting closer. And I'm not going to rush this. It's taking too long to get this far. I don't want to mess it up. You can hear how thin it is right there. And that's my transition point. And actually, I've got about a sixteenth of an inch to take off yet. So, famous last words will take a little more wood off. Are you getting the idea? Keep working this down until you get equal transparency all the way. And then if you want to make one final pass, just make sure you go over to your sharpener and put a fresh burr on this to make the inside nice and smooth. And once we get done with this, we're going to finish the bottom on the outside and start on the stem. Okay, well, I've been working away the wood here. We're going to start making the transition from the goblet uh, bowl to the stem. I'm using the light again because I'm now going to make the walls thin from the outside. And I don't want to go through the bottom after doing all this work. And see, slow and gentle. Oh, 
I'm holding my breath. I hope you are too to help me out. <laughs> you just have to be so careful at this point that you don't get a catch. When you get a catch, you're in trouble. Now I need to make that a little thinner. Now, the heartwood is darker colored. It's not gonna transmit the light through as well. So don't be fooled and think that you're not thin enough because you are, believe me, you are. Now, this is where the chicken in me comes out. So I'm gonna bring in my parting tool and bring this down the rest of the way. Now, you can use your gouges and they'll work fine, but remember that thing I said about some days your hands work, some days they don't? I have a bad feeling about the day with my hands. <laughs> so we're gonna take this down woo, to about an eighth of an inch. We're gonna see how brave we're gonna be. And I see a little bit, we're still dark there, so that means I'm very close to the pith, so I've gotta be very careful I don't make this too thin now, because if I'm in the pith, it will crack and snap off. Now, that's as far as I wanna go until I got myself a little support and back up here. This is a large cone center and that's going to give me the support I need because I'm going to put a piece of paper towel between here and gently, gently being the keyword, feed this into the bowl of the goblet. I don't want to put a lot of pressure on there but what I want is support because when I turn this on and as I make this thinner, this will wobble and snap off. This keeps it from wobbling and snapping off. And you can hear a little bit of noise. That's the wheel or the uh, spindle not quite turning. So now we're turning just enough pressure. Gonna lock it in there. Now we're gonna come in with our parting tool and continue to work our way down. And if you notice, I've got my tool rest at an angle. It's where I want it for the rest of the procedure because I don't want to turn this on and off because the torque would snap that stem once it gets really thin. So this is just like doing any thin spindle. You just work your way back in chunks until you're bound down to where you want to be, which would be the bottom of the goblet. Okay, everybody can breathe now. Now time to part this off. <laughs> no way. <laughs> you part that off, you're gonna blow up the whole project. We're gonna take a little pull saw and just gently cut off the remaining wood. There we go. <gasps> All right, there we go. <laughs> Glad that worked. <laughs> Well now, after sanding the bottom, I added a light coat of oil and that finished up our project. And as it dries, it's gonna warp. It'll be really, really cool. Now, if you have a lot of branch wood from all your friends who brought you over all this wood, make sure if you're not gonna turn it right away, you get green wood sealer. And it's a liquid that goes on the ends and you coat the wood like that. That will help slow down the checking or the splitting of the wood. Because if you don't do it, it will split within a couple of days and the wood will be unusable. And this way, at least you'll get yourself a month, two months, three months of time to where you can go back and turn that. Depends on which uh, climate you live in and how the uh, relative humidity affects your wood. Sounds kind of complicated, but basically, if you don't coat it, it'll dry out and you'll waste it. So anyway, I do that to all your big pieces of wood too, unless you're gonna turn them right away. I would leave them in this shape or in a full log form and coat those ends. And then you've got three months or so that you can get back to them and play with them. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed today's project that we actually turned a complete project all the way from greenwood to finish without any cracking, something you don't see too often. I'm glad we're done with it because my nerves are shot. <laughs> anyway, until the next time on the Wood Turning Workshop, keep turning. Not too bad. I think we got it thin. I got to read a paper through that. <laughs> The Wood Turning Workshop is made possible in part by Woodcraft, since 1928, providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Tormac, water-cooled sharpeners with innovative jigs and setting devices. Getting your sharpening done quickly gets you back to the job at hand. Format. Sharpening Innovation. Next time on the Wood Turning Workshop. Who in their right mind would turn pine? You can see we're shaking the lathe right now. Let's come back off of that. <laughs> see what I mean? You can shake the whole building really fast. I'm turning the top away just like I did the bottom, you know, to remove all that extra wood. And that will leave you a perfect cut, perfect bottom without any tear out. Everything's sanded, so we're ready to put our finish on. I'm just going to brush this in here and get it saturated. For more information about the Wood Turning Workshop, visit our website at rsupublictv.org. now because we're going to start making the transition from the job. Whoa, okay. Let's not do that. Huh? <laughs> oh, that's why I have an ulcer. Okay. Whew. Okay, we're still safe. Okay, we'll shoot again. To purchase a copy of this program, please call 1-800-823-7210 or visit our website, rsupublictv.org. You know, most wood turners, when they see wood like this, they think firewood. Well, not this week. I'm going to show you how to make a really cool project from green branch wood. Now, I need to make that a little thinner. It is such a joy cutting green wood as compared to dried wood. I'm glad we're done with it because my nerves are shot. 